Hey Fragrance family, I'm Daver. And I am excited. <laughs> and we're the Fragrance we're the Bros. We're the Fragrance Bros! Yes! Come at you again with another review, this time on Kist, or Kist, from Slumber House. Always glad to have uh, Mr. Excited here. How are you doing, Mr. Excited? Well, coincidentally, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm very excited. Let's do it. All right, so let's get straight to it. Uh, date introduced is 2015. It's classified as a floral, fruity gourmand. Notes are tobacco, peach, scotch heather, tonka bean, henna, elderberry, patchouli, and honey. Now, George, what do you get of longevity out of this? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my good. This thing, this thing glows. Yeah. Like, this thing freaking glows. Be just beast mode. Yeah. Insane beast mode. Now, I didn't get quite beastly longevity, but I got an excellent right. range, and it really right. is strong. And it is, it yeah. lasts a long time. What about projection? I get excellent projection. Yeah, I do as well. And one of the things that I think is really good about this is that the, which we don't always talk about this in the channel, but the, the silage on this is really nice. It's like a freight train, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it is like constant projection for like eight hours. I believe to quote Jeremy, his exact words were, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the, you've got to be careful on the trigger. I was not prepared, all right, for, for this, but I sprayed like, I put I put four sprays on. It was like one of the worst decisions. Yeah. <laughs> and Megs just just took over the whole house. Like my mum was like getting headaches and stuff, and she was like, "George, what is that?" And I said, "I can't even hear you. The <laughs> fragrance is so loud." <laughs> Season, I would say this is great for fall and winter, and day or night. I think I'd say perfect fall, uh, winter. Please, you know, be have courtesy. Do not. Don't go spraying this around in, in summer. This thing isn't a toy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but absolutely incredible for winter. And winter nights, winter evenings are oh, superb. Yeah. In purpose, I would say this is great for casual and great for formal as well. So, George, what does this remind you of? What, just It reminds me of how such a wonderful time it is to be alive. <laughs> in seriousness, it reminds me of, I mean, when I first smelled it, I was like, there's nothing in the world like this. But it actually does remind me of one, only one, one of a fragrance, Golden Shea <laughs> from um, Sal Salvatore Ferragamo. Okay. And there's a bit of a similarity, but that's it. This is so unique and so amazing and so brilliant. Um, I, I absolutely... I adore this. I love it so much. It's such an incredibly um, artistic and innovative fragrance. I love it. Yeah, I think it's a really great fragrance as well. One of the things that is said about this fragrance is that it was inspired by Savannah, Georgia. The summers in Savannah, Georgia. Oh, right. Now, the South is known for a few things. Georgia is really known for peaches. Um, okay. The South is also really known for good tobacco and whiskey. Those things are all in this fragrance, which I think mm. is really cool. It has a prominent peach note in it. Sure. It has a prominent honey note in it. Mm. Um, I do get some tobacco in there, a little bit of the tobacco in there. And everything mm. else is kind of uh, blended together pretty well. It does have yes. kind of a, a good booziness at the top, which is really nice. But overall, yeah. it's this really syrupy, sweet, tobacco-like fragrance. I think it's really, really good. The, yeah, I'd say this is, to me, a, 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 a masterpiece, to be completely honest. I get the honey and the peach blended so well. Um, scotch, not as much. Um, I don't really get that. I get. I mean, if anything, it's more of a bourbon. It's got the syrupiness on top, but it's got this intense heaviness. Like, it's got weight to it. That's the only way I can describe it. It's got this heavy, like, almost brooding um, weight at the bottom. And I, I, I really love it. And the, and the cool thing is, is I, I only have a small decant of this. I think I have about five mil. Okay. But I, I don't have to worry about that because it's just so potent, so long. I've got one spray on me right now, and that's enough. And yeah. it's a little spray, and that's enough. Yeah. Um, so brilliant. Now, I've mentioned Slumber House before. I really love Slumber House, and they have some really, like you said, innovative scents. Um, one of my all-time favorite scents of every scent is Sova by Slumber sure. House. That is just yeah. a brilliant fragrance. And yeah. there are hints of Sova in here. And I've heard some right. people say that uh, Keist smells like a sweeter version of Sova. I do get what they're saying. There are some, some commonalities between them. Right. Um, but if you don't like, like the, the hay-like, 
almost uh, herbal qualities of Sova, but you like more of a sweeter interpretation, I think this is your, your go-to right here. I really think that every person out there really needs to try Slumberhouse's fragrances. I believe they sell oh, man, samples on their site. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's just so worth trying. And you're right, like it's so strong that even the sample will last yeah, you a while. Yeah, yeah. This is the only Slumber House I've ever tried, um, unfortunately. But it is just, it, it, it's a different level of fragrance game. It's unlike most, if not 90% of any designer that I've ever smelt. There's just so much going on, and you can definitely tell that it's handmade. Yeah, it, it, it's not uh, factory constructed. It's not it's not been created to you know crunch numbers or to get sales it's been made because you know that Josh just had a really great idea for a fragrance and he's just made something really really interesting and something that he wanted to make for himself mm -hmm. and that really is you know a different level of, of fragrance artistry the thing that I love about it is is a lot of the emotions that it, that it elicits, and when you get into the indie fragrances, they're very emotional. Like they're very emotion evoking. It's a very provocative type of fragrance, and I can imagine that Slumber House are very kind of like provocative scents. Then they're, they're not made for you to just smell nice. They're actually constructed to challenge you. So yeah, this is this is the closest thing to like like. With filmmaking, they have art house films. Mm -hmm. um, this is like art house fragrance, fragrance uh, or art house scent. It's stuff like this that could turn you into a snob very easily. <laughs> yeah, I do get what you're saying. There's like a somberness to yeah. a lot of his fragrances, and mm -hmm. I definitely get that in this. I get that in Sova somewhat. Sure. Um, I but there's there's at the same time there's like an optimism there yeah. that I really like. You're right. This is like the silver lining in the fragrance world. You see the, the dark clouds in the yeah. mainstream fragrance world and how they're Absolutely. just watered We've reviewed down. some of them. Yeah, exactly. We sure have. <laughs> yeah. And you get to a point where you're just like, man, reviewing this fragrance is almost depressing yeah. because they're just making it, they're just slogging it out. Yeah, And absolutely. then you get to one of these and you're like, wow, you know, people can make good sense out there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is a gorgeous fragrance. Absolutely. And in the indie world, sometimes that's also hard to do as well because yeah. the indie, a lot of indie scents have like the indie smell that I don't like, and they right. they don't know when to hold back. They put all the notes in mm -hmm. and just hope something comes out. Josh Lobb seems very skilled at what he does, yeah. and very um, directed and purposeful, and it really shows in this. And I think we should also mention the bottle. Yeah. The bottle is is amazing. It's gorgeous. They're, yeah, they are gorgeous. And that, that, that has nothing to do with the scent, but as you know, people who collect uh, bottles, I, I think that's worth mentioning. It's just really cool. I can't wait to get myself a bottle of this. Mm -hmm. But like, there there are so many good things about this: the, the the bottle design, the scent itself, and I think the price is outstanding. The one critique that I would have against this is that there's something about this that kind of smells like a homemade candle that you get from a craft store, and okay. I, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. But there's a familiarity about it that I've smelled in like that scene that some people might not like. So it kind of almost smells like a home scent. But at the same time, it's a good, great home scent. It, the only criticism, and it's a really small one, is I, I think it's a, just a tad too linear. When you spray it, that's it. But yeah. uh, I think I read like an interview, like he doesn't, he doesn't do top notes. He just yeah. doesn't. He just goes completely base notes and all that kind of stuff. So there, are, from what I've heard, there isn't a lot of progression in his fragrances. As I smell it, I'm waiting for it to change into something. You know, I'm waiting for it to develop and, you know, give me another side to the story. But it just never does. And so that's, I don't know, it, it, I, I'm not like, good. it's not going to lose any marks for it. It's just a tiny bit disappointing. So what about compliments? Did you get me any compliments while wearing this? No. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, I'm kind of glad, you know, like, like, no, like, like, there weren't any compliments. And I was like, yeah, like, you, I just went into the mode of like, you know what, it, you wouldn't understand. That's right. <laughs> like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't understand. I knew with this one that my opinion was just going to be how it was. Like, there are some fragrances that I wear that I'm like, oh, I wonder what people think. But I, I, I didn't really go out of my way to, to ask for compliments with this one. Because I think it's got like such a personal thing to it. So, no, I, I didn't really get anything. 
this also gave my wife a headache. <laughs> yes, great, isn't it? And she thought it was okay. She didn't think it was amazing. She said it also reminded her of Sova. I didn't tell her the connection, but she right, got that sure. immediately. But uh, when I wore it out, I didn't really get any notices or anything. And, you know, this no. is pretty loud. Yeah, but no. at the same time, this is, again, I agree, this is one of those things where I don't care if people like it. No. It's just one of those things where I want to wear it because I think it's beautiful. And that's enough. It doesn't, like, it doesn't matter. And this is kind of where I am with my fragrance journey. Like, at the beginning, you are like, what, what gets the most compliments? Like, Aventus all day. You know, like, how do I attract the women? How do I get all this kind of stuff? And then you get, you come to a place where you're like, you know what, I'm probably not going to get a lot of compliments and people are probably not going to like this one, but do I care? Absolutely not. This is, this is a piece of art and I love it for myself. Bang for buck, this is $160 for a 30 mil and that is on the high side, I think, but you have to keep into consideration, this is an extra yeah. strength. I mean, it is super strong yeah, I know. and you only really need one spray, maybe two. So if you're thinking about it that way, if you wear one spray, this is still mm -hmm. going to last a long time. If you even wanted to dilute it a little bit, you could do that. So $160 for 30 mil, really high per mil, but consider the other value that's added on top of it. So George, final rating, what do you give this? Oh man, five stars. One of the most easiest five stars uh, I could ever give to a fragrance. It's just fantastic, it's wonderful, it's beautiful, and it is well, well worth your time. Yeah, I'm going to go a little bit lower. I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. I think this is really great. Um, it doesn't blow me away like other fragrances have, especially Soba. Sure. Right. But I think this is a fantastic scent. Really yeah. worth checking out. And, you know, the price seems high, but there's so much more invisible value that is added in than just yeah. the sticker price. Yeah. Um, uh, one other thing that I need to mention is that the juice is so dark that you need to be careful about it. I sprayed this on my skin and I wore a white shirt and it stained the collar on my white shirt oh, after no. I sprayed it on my skin. I didn't spray it while wearing the shirt. It stays on, it sticks to you for a long time. So I'm, I'm knocking it down a star because it stained my shirt. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> it's revenge. No, but I think it's an excellent fragrance. So that's all we have. Let us know if you've tried Keist and what you think of it down in the comments down below. Do you like it, love it, hate it? Let us know. And of yeah. course, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe down below. We'll love you for it. And yeah. I'll have a link down below to George's channel where you can check him out. Thanks again, George, for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Pleasure's all mine. And we'll see you next time. We're the Fragrance right. Brothers. Bye. David, do we... Do we really need to care about all this stuff? Do we really need to care, care about all the artistic stuff? I mean, why don't we just wear, like, I don't know, Dior Sauvage or <laughs> Ultramal or all of those ones that get, like, a lot of compliments and stuff like that? I mean, this whole art thing, it's... You're going to mention it's, Sauvage in every one of our videos from now on, oh, aren't you? Man, yeah, yeah, too, yeah, just, just down, just death, it needs to die, you know? Okay, rant over, there we go. <laughs> no more Sauvage.